Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated. And with Roman monks, with voice modulators, uh, chanting in the background, we are going to take a look at Ireland on the verge of history in the... Uh, the Fallen Eagle mod, I'm going to call this the Fallen Empire mod a lot by mistake because I've been playing a lot of Stellaris of recent and it's still stuck in my head. So we can see there in the top right hand corner the Fallen Eagle mod takes place or it starts on the 17th of January uh, 7 or 395 and this is pretty much the, the very verge of known Irish history. Irish prehistory tends to go up to the year 400. And then in the century after that we see the introduction of writing to Ireland. And we begin, begin to get a better look at what Irish history looked like. But up until this point in time we don't know a huge amount about what's going on. So there's this massive civil war between the Western and the Roman empires. Uh, the whole thing is falling apart. We don't care. We're out in the middle of nowhere having a great old time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a bit. And by the power of movie magic and post-editing, uh, hopefully here on the right-hand side I'll be able to put in a map from uh, Vincent Morley from his blog. There'll be a link below in the description. So he's put up a, a chunk of maps from a book he's working on. The blog is Oscailge, all the maps are Oscailge, the legends are in Irish, but if you have any interest in uh, any of the other maps that are there, there's ones going back to uh, Ptolemy's 2nd century uh, map of Ireland from uh, geography, and then up into the 1200s. If you have any interest, pop on over to the Maniacal Incorporated Discord, and we can have an old chat about them there. But uh, you'll see that there are substantial differences between the map that Morley has of Ireland in the year 400 and the map that we have on the left hand side of uh, Fallen Eagle Ireland. Now again like I said this is prehistory. Uh, we don't know a huge amount about who the actual peoples ruling Ireland at this point in time were but we have an idea of what the, uh, the lands looked like. You can see that Ennis is actually part of Connacht we'll call it Connacht for now, and we can see also that Ormond, uh, what is pretty much Ormond, is part of uh, Leinster, so Munster is tiny. Ulster would probably also have Brefni, if this was to be, if this map, if Morley's map was to be reproduced across into uh, Fallen Eagle. Now the problem is that uh, Connacht, as you can see, is not Connacht, it's Ol Nyekmacht, and this is a reference to the Fir Ol Nyekmacht, uh, the people who would have ruled this region at the time. Uh, Munster is not ruled by the Onacht. The Kinshalig have not yet come to power in Leinster. In the next 150 years, we're going to see the prehistory, or the prehistoric, that's the pre-400s, ruling dynasties on the island of Ireland overthrown, and they will be replaced by upstart dynasties who will seize power and then fabricate genealogies and histories uh, claiming that they have ruled Ireland for centuries. So the Fir Ol Nyekmacht will be overthrown by peoples who will call themselves the Connachta. And they will create these genealogies linking themselves back to Con Caird Cahach, who is supposed to have died maybe around the early 2nd century. And he will be linked back further to Tuhul Chakmar, who is supposed to have uh, retaken the High Kingship towards the end of the first century with a foreign army. Uh, that's possibly a reference to uh, a planned Roman invasion. So it's possible that the Romans may have helped a down on his look, exiled Irish prince, given him a bit of an army. Uh, with which to uh, to retake his kingdom in Ireland as a prelude to an, an invasion that never happened. Uh, the Onacht, they're going to emerge from Ossery. They're going to overthrow the Corcoli and the Dalburn. They'll take Ossery, swarm into Munster, seize that. Then they'll take Clare. 
and then they will fabricate uh, a genealogy for themselves claiming that they have ruled Munster for centuries. So what the, uh, the devs of the Fallen Eagle mod have uh, implemented here, if we take a look, in Connacht they have the Connachta, in Munster they have the Onachta, so they're going with the fabricated uh, house line, this would be the Kinchelig, uh, this is just nonsense, it's um, the province should be Tara, and Bray is the uh, the eastern part of the kingdom, and up here then you'd have either the uh, Dal Naradi or the Dal Fiathuk or something like that, but um, what they're going with is the fabricated genealogies that were created by the Connachta and created by the Onachta, and really Considering that we know so little about this time period, you have to ask the question, is there much else of an option that they can do? The fun thing about this, though, is that we get an opportunity to play some really important and really famous characters from these fabricated genealogies, such as, up here in Connacht, Oka Mac Murdoch. So in a lot of the later histories that will come to be written that are quite often uh, referenced for this time period, so we'll say the Annals of the Four Masters, which are written, they aren't going to be written down for another twelve to 1300 years, or the works of uh, Geoffrey Keating. Uh, Ucca is said to have died around the middle of the 4th century, so he should be dead with about 50 years at this stage. Uh, he's said to have been High King of Ireland, and on his death, he was succeeded by his brother-in-law. But in this mod, his brother-in-law is already dead. Now, he has two very famous and important children, one of whom is connected with a very famous event in the early to mid-400s. So I think the devs have put uh, Oka and his children alive at this time period to, uh, to make sure that that child is alive uh, into the early to mid-400s. And what's interesting is that at a point in time in history, when contracts were enforced by the giving and taking of hostages, when kidnap and slavery were common occurrences, just how many people do you need to kidnap and enslave to earn the nickname Oka Mugmadoin or Oka Mumadoin? Oka the Slave Lord, because that is who we are looking at here up in the top right-hand corner. A mythological ancestor of the Connachta and the Enail. His two important sons, there we can see his heir, is Brian, and he will be the predecessor of the major Ivruan dynasties which will emerge in Connacht, such as the Ivruan Shola, the Ivruan Vrefni, and, uh, most importantly, the Ivruan E. And they will later become the Ikrahur. So famous members of that family would be, for example, Rory O'Connor, the last High King of Ireland during the Norman invasions. But uh, Brian's brother, his youngest uh, brother, and Ucca's youngest son, is Niall. Niall Nanoi Gulloch, Niall of the Nine Hostages. So what's going to happen is that the Connachta will basically push up into Ulla and down here into Tara. Um, Niall is going to seize what's described here as Alach, basically Donegal. He will, or his descendants, will create uh, Arguilla. They will split Arguilla off from Ulla and uh, have it as vassals. So Arguilla means givers of, uh, giving hostages or givers of hostages. And his other descendants will push down into Meath. And this will become the northern and southern Enail lands. And of course, Nile of the Nine Hostages is linked with the kidnapping of a young prisoner, a young slave from the western coast of Britain, who will be taken to Ireland, sold into slavery, watching sheep up in a mountain. His name is Patricius. And then one day, Holy God Almighty comes to him and tells him to go way back home and learn how to be a holy man, and to come back and bring Christianity to the Irish. Well, joke's on you, St. Patrick, because Palladius had already brought 
Christianity to Ireland, uh, probably the early 400s. So that's the time period we're in. We're at the, the end of the pagan era. We're at the end of Irish prehistory. The next 150 years is going to bring about massive upheaval on the island of Ireland, more than likely the collapse of the Western Roman Empire is going to see the trade routes that the prehistorical peoples had built collapse, and that will lead to uh, their vassals rising up and overthrowing them, and then creating histories and genealogies which uh, link them to mythology, basically link them to the land going back for centuries. They will claim to have ruled for centuries, whereas the reality is uh, that they haven't come to power yet. But for today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take on the role of Ucka Mugmadoin and see just how many people we can kidnap and take hostage and ransom back. Can we live up to the name of Ucka Mugmadoin? Ucka, the Slave Lord. Okay then, here we are on the 17th of January, 395. I re-rolled Uka a few times to see if I could get some stats and traits that I was happy with. And that I felt were accurate for somebody who was known as the Slave Lord, or the Slave Master. He's brave, he's impatient, forgiving, hmm... Maybe not great, but uh, it was as good as we could do. It was as good as we could do. I'm sure he's forgiving. So that gives us, for his lifestyle, Marshall. Uh, only 10% experience per month. Not great. We would probably put him on. I think he needs as much Marshall as possible. I'm not too sure if prowess affects rulers um because it gives a knight those values i don't know if it actually gives those values to a um to a ruler though it does make him less likely to die which is good but at the moment i think what i want him to have is to increase the martial skill it also gives advantage though do you know what look we'll we'll go with the chivalry focus there's going to be a lot of battles there's going to be a lot of battles it would be great if we were already going down gallant but we are not, so I might, um, that's going to be an important one. We might go for Stalwart Leather as soon as possible. I was going to try and finish off this tree, but I would say Stalwart Leather is where we are going to. Now, before we begin, we will just take a quick look at the religion, Gaelic paganism, similar in fashion and tradition to the to uh, Pictish Druidism, Gaelic Druidism has managed to distinguish itself from its close cousin in Britannia by being arguably the most pure form of Druidism unaffected by Roman or Gallic influences by virtue of its isolation over the years, both north of the traditional province of Britannia and on the, on the unconquered and independence island of Hibernia. So we'll just take a look at our, our main tenets. I saw Tenet recently. Confused living daylights out of me. Uh, ancestor worship. Uh, prestige from level of splendor for newborns uh, on getting married. Maximum long reign. Opinion bonus goes up. Uh, our ancestors watch over us from beyond the grave, guiding us and showing us the way forward. So there would have been a lot of traditions about the Tuatha Dé and things like this. Th then again, they would have had stories about... Uh, their genealogy and things like this. So genealogy would have been very important to them. It would be great if Ancestor Worship let you put up something like a small rune stone. And you could roleplay it as an ohm stone. Uh, the other one then is Human Sacrifice. So the ancient Irish definitely practiced human sacrifice. I'm not too sure about what, what it was like way up here. But uh, the ancient Irish did definitely practice... Uh, human sacrifices, a number of such ritual sacrifices have been found in uh, bogs. So there's a couple of famous cases. There's one body that was found. Its throat had been slit. He had been hit with an axe three times. I think once in the head, 
uh, the shoulder and the chest. Uh, he was cut in half. But most gruesome of all, he had had his nips cut off. So QI had a great amount of fun there a couple of years ago uh, explaining that in ancient Ireland uh, a sign of submission to a king was that you would suckle on his nips give his nips a good old sucking and uh, therefore by de-nipping somebody as part of the, uh, the process it's entirely possible that this was uh, a king or a chieftain amongst his people and he was being sacrificed in the hopes that his death would uh, rejuvenate the land, keep the rains flowing, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, so some of the some of the sacrifices were indeed very gruesome. However, it's unlikely the practice survived into the the millennia. Very unlikely there would have been any sacrifices in the hundred years predating the the start date of this mod, three ninety five. Uh, or even back beyond that. So, human sacrifices had fallen out of uh, use uh, many hundreds of years before the start of this mod. However, uh, by having human sacrifice as one of your tenants, it grants the raid for captives, causes Belai, against neighboring realms. So, so we're going to make use of that. And then the other is Warmonger, which again will uh, fit in nicely with our ability to go and uh, declare war for captives, members of the clergy can serve as commanders or champions and of course members of the clergy because we practice uh, a druidic religion Gaelic druidism the uh, what would they be the clergy for our religion is of course that's the wrong page shamans what or shamans I hope at some stage we get a shaman called Seamus but uh, that's maybe something that needs to be changed. We actually don't have a marshal. That's that's not great. Uh, very quickly, we're going to look at the deities. There's Lou. There's Bridget, who will be taken on board by the Christian church and made into St. Bridget. I don't know if uh, Epona was ever worshipped in Irish or in, or in Ireland. But these gods would be kind of more wider Celtic European gods that would have been worshipped in different forms and formats in Ireland. And finally, 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 we will look at the holy sites. So we have the Hill of Tara. Way down here. Uh, around here should be... I think it's actually up here. Uh, the Hill of Ushnach. Another important religious site. Giant's Causeway. Giant's Causeway has been added to the game. As a holy site. Look, let's see where Giant's Causeway is. What? So Giant's Causeway is here in Argyle, and at some stage over the next hundred or so years there's going to be a huge earthquake and it'll float across to this region. Um, I presume they couldn't really put two holy sites so close together, so they put Giant's Causeway over here. But there you go. Maybe we can, maybe we can go and reclaim it and reattach it to the, uh, to the country somehow. In the comments below, if you know what these are for, please tell me. Because I know I can click on them, but I don't know what it does. I don't know what it does. I don't know, does it deactivate them? Does it activate it? I might try some battles and then try clicking on this one, because this is the one that, uh, that I would really, really want. We need to do a few things. Uh, come to our military. Our champions. My god. That is bad. Uh, we will invite some champions. If we come and take a look at the the guy in Tara, uh, he tends at the start to be the only person that actually has any daughters. So everybody else, if we check, has sons. So not great for forming alliances. So we will see if we can form an alliance with this guy. Uh, what's his army like? 952 and we are on. Uh, 1500. He'd be a good he'd be a good target for an attack. But uh, we do also need allies. So we might ally with him and then actually uh, use this um, this causes Belli to attack Ulster. So let's send him or his daughter a marriage proposal for one of our sons. Let's say... 
Fear crap. Sure. Send the proposal. And we have an empty council position. We'll wait for some marshals to come in, because I don't think we have anyone great at the moment. We'll wait for some marshals to come in. And uh, very quickly, we will... Uh, raise our eldest son, Brian, ourselves, and our youngest son, Niall. We'll give them martial educations. Uh, Fiocra. Not even looking at what those guys were actually any good at. We'll send him to our shaman. Sure. And... Joe, is there anybody any good at intrigue? Sure, Lassariana, our spy master. So we've gotten that alliance with uh, Tara. But the other thing we can do, of course, is... Or that we kind of have to do is nominate our successor. We will nominate our eldest son, Brian, who will go on to, uh, like I said, rule this region and form the uh, Evruin dynasties. Will uh, his younger brothers? They'll have to go way off and find land somewhere else. We have somebody has come to our court, and I'd say they will be our new marshal. The army has risen. It has been set to raiding. We don't have a tremendous amount of uh, champions. However, we have a good-sized army, and we can hopefully mitigate our lack of champions by looking for uh, some regions that have few enough soldiers so we're going to make for the Isle of Man first of all where I have heard the crack was 90 and we might even raid these areas as well and the interesting thing about uh, this mod is it gives the Gaelic culture raiding vessels unlocks the ability to raid overseas So that shouldn't worry us too much. That might be uh, beneficial to us. So we'll be able to hit the coast once we have uh, some knights and some troops that will allow us to do that. So in we go. Our first raids. We might get some hostages. We might not. Who knows? We're going to get some money together and uh, see if we can... do something with that money. I'm just watching what's uh, what's going on here. And we have a new champion answers our call. There's more raiders coming down looking for stuff to steal. Uh, that army that just disappeared, I wonder, would it be worth? I think we'd lose a good chunk of of troops. Would it be worth hitting that for three? Or trying to come over and hit. Uh, that's under siege. 415. And here we go. The big, the big money areas that we'll be able to hit. Uh, once we have some more knights, like Dimnon. I think for our first raid, we haven't done too bad a job. We might come back. We might see is there any regions around here. Uh, Tara, by the looks of it, is heading out to sea to see what it can see. So Tara, the lazy devils, from what I can see, they went out to sea, sailed up here, attacked Ulster, and they are about to be hammered. Bubio has also just joined us. With a name like that, we have to hire him. House Afirshawn. Am I reading that right? Oh my god, this man is utterly useless. He is going to be commanding our armies. Absolutely. This man has to be hired. He's not the worst. He's better than poor old Eremon and Trenka. So we're seeing as we enter March that the snows are melting. The snows that Ireland is famous for. Uh, he has no alliances. He is back up to 1,100. He only has two champions. 
and some Gaelic warbands, which we have to look at as well. We will declare war, and we will raid for captives. So it's going to cost us 50 prestige. Uh, sacrifice uh, characters and county inhabitants of High Chieftain Luaid's realm are sacrificed by you. So we gain 100 prestige. Uh, we'll do it for the crack, but you know what? Raiding for captives doesn't sound like it is all that it's made out to be. Uh, we will raise our army. And we'll head for Dundelgan. Is Dunpodrig there? It is indeed. So Dunpodrig is named after St. Patrick, who probably hasn't even been born yet. So they got into the they got into the mountains, the devils. Um let's hit them in the mountains. Let's see how it goes. So our champion was wounded, because they probably don't have enough champions to get wounded. Ooh, Bio! No, he was maimed. So there's our first major battle, the Battle of Dundelgan. Uh, we actually managed to kill... How old is he? He's 18. They have an 18-year-old fighting. Well, they had an 18-year-old fighting. Uh, so Dovna... Dimnon, Buobio, all the ones that we just hired. And what I might do is we might move the command to Eremon. We give it to Eremon. He's the only siege engineer we have. And we'll see if we can bring this to an end. And almost not too far short of uh, a year after actually starting the siege, we are told that our wife is pregnant. It was her brother who is supposed to have succeeded... Uh, what's his name? Oka, as High King of Ireland. I was distracted. Our son has come of age. The future of the dynasty. Well, at least he's a military engineer. That's... oh, that's not good. He's just and wrathful. Uh, he has only developed a basic understanding of the subject, but at least he has learned the essentials of managing an army. I can only hope that the rest will come with experience. They grow up so fast, we're probably going to appoint him as a knight and get into a lot of trouble when he gets killed. Um, if we could take this other province, we could bring the war to an end. We wouldn't have to call in Tara, who I think are under attack themselves. They're being raided... And they're being hammered. Who is that? That looks like somebody from... Oh, that's Loch Gorman. That's uh, Leinster. Where are you going now, Loch Gorman forces? Who's this coming in? Who's this coming in over here? Who are these boys? Who are these buckos? Inverness! I won't forget this. Uh, we have a daughter. Praise Bridget. Not saying Bridget. Is Bridget. Um, I think it's Olach. May you grow to be strong and wise, my daughter. Alliance material. Oh, we've taken somebody hostage. Get for these devils. What's going to happen here? Raid for captives. Are we going to end up massacring a ton of people? Um, enforced demands. Hostages taken by all war participants will be released. Characters and county inhabitants of his realm are sacrificed. Does, does that mean we basically wipe out his entire court? Is that what that means? What I want to do very quickly uh, before we do that is check uh, our court, our prisoners. That's it. Mianach, our first prisoner... I might have a little prison count or um, hostage count, slave count up here somewhere. At the moment, it's at one. We will bring this to an end, enforce our demands. Um, 
We've gained 100 prestige. My allies didn't do nothing. What does he tell us? Blessings upon your household. So be it. And uh, let's see what's actually happened here. Uh, we're being raided. That's what that is. Our heir is unmarried. Okay. Well, do you know what? It was interesting. We we got to see we got to see some stuff. Is Tara? Thank you. Tara's coming in to try and uh, stop them. And we should be in a position to get in and join in the fun. Send them packing, and we might even follow after them. Uh, did they actually manage to siege the area down, first of all, though? Because one of our courtiers... One of our courtiers was captured... By Inverness. God damn it. So the good news is that our prison count has gone up to... Four. So we still have Mianok, who I am going to ransom. Uh, I'm going to accept that. He doesn't have the money for it, but I don't I don't necessarily care. And uh, this guy is being ransomed to himself for a favor. That's no good. Favors are no good. What? Okay, you're going to join in my court. What might be an interesting idea would be to actually be able to enslave prisoners because some of them you can't sell for money um so even in this case now i could only get 63 for me enough if you had an option where you could sell somebody to a slaver for five gold or maybe not even gold but prestige and you could have a court position uh, that slaves could occupy that they would basically grant prestige to the person who uh, holds them, <clears throat> but that it would also cost money to maintain them. Uh, so that would uh, recreate the anarchy of Ireland at this point in time. Will we try? Will we try? Ah, uh, we'll have to let her go. That's poor Mianuk's mammy, is it? No, it's not. It's just, it's his step mammy. So we'll let her, we'll let her go. Away off, away off. Gain a week hook. Um, negotiate her release. Conmol, you're going to be fighting in my armies. I don't know where you came from. Uh, negotiate his release to recruit him. Uh, Mogron. Let's see. Execution method. Denip. So let's denip this guy for 25 piety. So that's the good news. The bad news is that at the moment we do not have the money to um, get our son back. So I'm actually... The devil wants a hundred. Now where is his land? Where is your land? Okay, his liege is... Uh, is the king of Pickland. Who does not have the forces to resist us. I'd say what we're going to do is we're going to follow him out to sea. To see what we can see. And um, let's let's raid some of these some of these regions. So Moyle Moira has accepted. She has left. We have, however, lost piety because people that were marked for sacrifice were released. Uh, he's been freed rather than sacrificed to the Dagda. The druids and people alike are unhappy. Yeah, they're not. Go away out of that. So we'll mark him for... Or we won't mark him for sacrifice. It's an interesting system. I'd rather if we could just raid for captives and decide what we wanted to do with them ourselves. Uh, maybe it's specifically because they don't want you to have a mechanic to capture valuable prisoners and ransom them back and turning it into a, a money-making engine. But that's what I want. I want a money-making engine. So to make things worse, it wasn't that one of my sons was uh, taken prisoner. Two of them were. And I have ransomed them both back. I was going to send these guys uh, raiding. I might actually have to stand them down for a couple of minutes. Just to try and make some, uh, some money back. So two of my sons were captured by the guy in Inverness. I'm going to go and burn that place to the ground. I'm going to absolutely burn it to the ground. 
we have a perk. We will go for Galleon Tree because we're going to be uh, commanding the armies a good chunk of time. Uh, Caesar's Triumph. While studying the tactics of the ancient generals, I was amused to learn. Would, would Caesar be ancient at this stage? Maybe. So we can either give him... A military engineer, which might be handy because we wouldn't have to swap the armies back and forth every so often. Unyielding defender, uh, but he gains stress reckless. I think we might give a military engineer. I am not too sure how this has happened, but our son has converted to uh, Nicene Christianity. Okay. I don't think I want to allow... Well, do I care about the the rating for... No, we'll have to stop these guys. No, Niall! I was like, who the hell is Niall? Niall, no! He's already trying to bring about the fall of the pagan order. Right, so I've seen what my mistake was. Uh, I was trying to set my armies... If they're not a raiding army and you try to move them into the water, it costs money. If they are raiding, however, and you move them into uh, the sea, it does not cost money. So, can we get to Inverness itself? Or do we need to kind of come around the coast and hit from the other side? We could, from where we are, hit the Hebrides. Uh, I think they've been hit uh, pretty badly. They have a strong enough army. We could actually go and hit the king himself for not controlling his uh, his peasants. So many options. I don't know how much of a position we're going to be in to do much more. We're taking, well, we're not taking a lot of money. I think we've taken nine or something. The king himself is up to about 1,400 troops, so we mightn't risk it right now. Uh, but what I could do is come down the coast and hit some of the weak regions over here. I don't think there's much of a point in coming up this way just yet. So we can go on a nice long tour. Um, it behooves a high chieftain to spend time at sea, which is what we're doing at the moment, with the salty air in his face and a fine vessel beneath his feet. Today, it sees my personal craft and a small escorting squadron out for drills, practice, and plaisure. The short voyage has been an exhilarating change of pace from the life at court when we spot it. A distant plume of water, followed by a small island of wine-dark flesh rolling out of the waves, the greatest beast of all the deeps, a whale. So we can either get the harpoons, 46% chance that we get some money, 53% chance that we lose some prestige, we lose some stress, uh, let others handle the carcass for a guaranteed 50. I think we'll take the guaranteed 50 because we're actually so caught for money. Nice. We are so caught for money that we need something. So we land down here. Close to, if I am correct, it's Dunbar. We'll raid that first of all, and we might even... Oh, I think we will take a look at Fife. Yes. That would be very beneficial if we could hit Fife. Has this place recovered? No. And we have taken that place. I think their army is retreating back to us. How would we get to Fife? Uh, we could go around the long way. I am wary of that army coming down to us. The endless clash of metal on metal. The chafing of armor. The sting of sweat. It is a dance that is as familiar as it is exhausting. Uh... We can become a respected expert, or we can potentially gain prestige, martial lifestyle, 
or 30% chance that we're wounded. What will respected expert give us? Two prowess. Do you know what? Yeah, sure. Instead of hitting Fife, I think we could probably take this region out faster. We will lose 100 casualties to attrition, but we should be able to get out of here faster as well if the king decides to raise his army. This could have been a terrible choice. I think it is. I think it's going to be a very bad decision. We have an advantage, apparently. I think we're in trouble! He's taken the 21 gold from us. Doesn't make a difference. We saw a whale. And back to Ireland we go, and all we have to our name is another prisoner. That brings us up to five. Uh, we can ransom them for 25 quid to somebody in Katniss. So, there you go. Do you know what? It was a good old day. We got to see a whale. We got to see a whale. We got, uh, we got a prisoner. Got to see bits of Scotland. I'm happy. I had a great time. So here is the aftermath of that defeat. We lost almost 500 troops to their... Uh, 330. Dovna had a mighty day out though. Look at that. 43 kills. Uh, many of our... Okay. Dimnon did well. Then nobody else did well. Uh, Conmol was killed in the battle. The Dogda wanted him. The Dogda was promised that he would have him as a sacrifice. And the Dogda got him in the end. There's Brian. Our son and heir. With his prowess of two. <clears throat> And there's Gannett. Uh, we kidnapped his wife and ransomed her back to him. So, do you know what? Everyone's happy now. Everyone's happy. I'm just glad. I'm just glad that everyone's happy. Except Conmol. He's dead. So we're told that the walls of Drumahair are collapsing and that the, uh, the people there want some money to fix them. I also want money, so they want 50 quid. Uh, we could take a 47% chance that we do an okay enough job. 52% chance, though, that they are disastrously rebuilt. What will that actually do? Popular opinion and fort level. However, we will gain some stress. That's bad. We will gain a 100 martial lifestyle. That's good. I'm going to supervise the reconstruction personally. And you know what? For 20 years... Nobody will notice that we did a terrible job. So do you know what? Inverness came in, they attacked us, they kidnapped Brian, they kidnapped his brother, and then we went back after them. Okay, we didn't actually go for Inverness, but we, uh, we took out a lot of the rest of Pickland. We kidnapped some random old woman they came after us there was a big battle look we should just put all of this behind us an alliance to Inverness so this is the guy that kidnapped Brian and now we're going to marry Brian to his daughter to form something vaguely resembling an alliance The army isn't fully recovered, but it has been re-raised, and we are moving it north into Alloch. Because if we look at the forces of Ulla, there they are, all four of them. Look at that for a mighty army. If we look at the forces of Ulla, they're actually dropping heavily. Uh, their chieftain is in prison. There is... Argyle is trying to conquer the region. The Divils. Do you know what? It just means that there's more stuff for us to raid on our borders. It's fine. Did that raid go through? Did we take something? Do we have something? We don't. Um, it does have loot, though. I know there's problems like this on the base game. 
I don't think that's been dealt with, has it? There's, like, flags which indicate you can't actually raid this place, um, but they're not firing for us. So we can't raid them. I wonder, do we, do we have some kind of a truce with them? What is our Giles army like? Uh, we're pretty much looking at it in its entirety. I think most of their good places have been uh, raided down. So we could go for... We go on a bit of a walkabout. I mean, we've raised the army. It'd be a terror to send them home now. Might as well go on a bit of a walkabout. So as we start raiding down the Hebrides, they're probably going to come for us now. They'll be returning home. Unhappy that we are uh, taking some of their land. Uh, Trenka has worked hard to convince our neighboring realms and vassals that the peace treaty I entered with the chief of Ulla. When did I enter a peace? Oh yeah, we attacked him. I forgot about that. Well, we can declare war on him again as we so see fit. Well done, Trenka. Talk to the hand, man in prison. We declared war on him. I totally forgot about that. So we fire and blood in the Hebrides. We're going to burn Giant's Causeway to the ground. Uh, bounteous plunder. We gain stress because we're forgiving. Nonsense. So what we might now be able to do... is let's see if we can raid Alok now. So poor old Ulster's having a bad time because it's lost Ulster. I have my Marshal improving our uh, champions. We accidentally crossed into Connacht soil as we crossed through Belku, bringing back 36 quid. That's way more than we had that time that everyone died over here. That we don't talk about anymore. The Isle of Man. The Isle of Man is looking nice. The Isle of Man is looking nice. Oh, the Isle of Man is looking nice. So it'll be interesting to see what we need to do before we can actually start hitting these regions. Which is uh, really what I want to do. And we have captured another prisoner. I think in the middle of a game of dress up. I know this place is being sieged down at the moment. I'm wondering what would indicate when is a good time to, to attack uh, these regions. So these guys, they have alliances. Does that cover the entire region? It does. I'm wondering if uh, the midst of a rebellion or a, or a war or something would be uh, would be a good time. Is there anywhere else we could hit while we are raiding? So Munster is not doing great at the moment. I think it's at war with uh, Leinster. So Munster is trying to conquer Leinster. Let's sail around the coast of Munster. Let's do some raiding over there. And let's see who we have in our prison. Okay. Well, we have captured... The wife of... Vicarius Magnus Maximus of Britannia. She's got a... She's got an interesting hat. Her son is the High Chieftain of Man, and he is not willing to pay any money for his mother. He has a lot of money. He could easily pay that money for his mother. Um, yeah, it looks like... There you go. Um, we have a call to war from Inverness. They're attacking somebody. Their enemies are the Isles. 
Do you know what? We'll accept. That could be a good opportunity to get some uh, prisoners. So there's lots of people joining on either side, but it's effectively a war against Argyle. And we're going to march our army up into Ulster and uh, see if we can take that region. Maybe push across back and see the Giant's Causeway again. Maybe that's it there, those blue little lines. Inverness has a hefty enough army marching around. It's attempting to engage Argyle's forces. We are whittling away Dunpodrick, where St. Patrick will be buried when he's born. We don't really know when he was born, uh, but it doesn't look like he came to Ireland until about the 420s to 440s. And one of the legends is that it was our son, Noel Nunoigulach, that... Uh, captured him, and speaking of captured, we captured nothing. That's disappointing. We could head across and siege Kilmartin. Highly likely the war is going to come to an end. 87% war score. Should we wait here in case they retreat back into... this region, because that's what it looks like is going to happen. Will we turn around in time to hit them? After my army sets up camp, I hear a commotion coming from my champion's lodgings, investigating the disturbance. Uh, Trenka and Eremon are having an argument. Unity, 43% chance to gain 100 martial lifestyle. Have them all whipped, we gain 50 martial lifestyle. I do want that martial lifestyle. 43% chance only. I think it succeeded. It did, yes. 150 prestige and 100 martial lifestyle. Yes, we've taken a prisoner. That's all I've ever wanted in life is prisoners. We're at 100% war score, so we can just hang around. I'll bring the army back. I will check our court. A single prisoner, prisoner number seven. Welcome, good sir. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Should I... Ransom him. Are you flat broke? God damn it, you're... If you were flat broke, you'd have more money than you have right now. And again, this is what I'd like. As... How would this work, though, if you had that kind of slaver mechanism that I was talking about? What would you do here? Would this guy just end up working in somebody's court? Until he could pay his way out. Does the wife not have any money? No, never mind. I'm not going to execute him. The devil. We have won the war. Led by our best friends in Inverness. We had great best friends. Uh, what do we get? 65 prestige. Nice. And just very quickly there, we'll take a look at the slaughter at Carrig Fergus. Uh, Dovna with 27, Dimnoin 15. Brian, do you know what? You're, you're trying. Bless you, you're trying. You're an 11. What's the prowess? Two. Oh, because he's craven. Uh. Hopefully, hopefully your brother makes some shape of himself. He's, uh, okay, he's a six. That's, yeah, he's not looking too bad. Your brother is going to be better than you, Brian. So with all the money we have, we should probably do something with it. I am going to construct war camps. It's going to be five years until they are finished. Uh, they'll give us increased levies and an extra knight. And we're seeing... What are we seeing over here? There's a couple of wars going on. How very... How very interesting. So this entire region here 
is going to see waves of raiding and piracy uh, right down to the fall of the Vikings, the, the end of the Viking era. Because it's just so handy. It's just so handy. Get a ship, get some men, go out and attack everything in sight. It's great. So we even have Pictland, if I am correct. Are they Pictish troops? We have Fire and Blood. Uh, Bounteous Plunder. How can you say no to Bounteous Plunder? Other than the fact that we might be on the verge of a mental breakdown. We can do two more Bounteous Plunders before we need to start um, losing some stress. We are now widely known. I think we might come down and take this region as well. And call it a day. We already have 43 gold for this army. Our son is married. I forget. Oh, that's um, the guy's basically in Tara. So we now have an alliance that's strengthened our alliance to Tara. It's entirely possible this single raid is going to pay for the construction of the war camp if uh, if we get some money for the prisoner that we've taken. So back home, back home we go, happy out with ourselves after our day's work. Are we happy out with ourselves after our day's work? Are we happy out with ourselves after our day's work? Go on. Go on, so. We are seeing severe upheaval in this region, and this is exactly what would have happened. You would also then have the dynasties here taking opportunity of uh, the collapse in power structures to come across and raid, or even to settle. So there would have been a lot of um, common settlers from the Leinster region all along this coast. I covered it in one of the... Uh, the Irish history in CK3 videos. So, I'm only doing this because it's historically accurate. Boys, oh boys, there won't be a cow milked in Mayo when the victorious forces come home. It's like they won the All-Ireland. We have three prisoners bringing us up to a grand total of ten. Uh, we're not going to get any ransom for... Spedusa. We have a member of the Brigantes, uh, which was also the name of a tribe that uh, ruled in this region. Or is the name of a tribe mentioned in Ptolemy's um, uh, geography. So they, they think that there's connections between the Brigantes here and the Brigantes wherever the hell they were over here. Will we get anything for you? Ten quid. And what will we get for you? A favor. A favor. Well, we're not going sacrificing a seven-year-old. I don't think the dog there would be too happy if we let go of people we'd marked for sacrifice and instead sent him a seven-year-old. So look. Yeah, what can we do with him? Um, we get a weak hook. Sure. And you, Spedusa. Do you know what? Oh wait, well, I was going to say Spedusa would make a good uh, physician. Novice physician is... Hmm. Do you know what? We'll demand your conversion <laughs> to Gaelic paganism. And... I think the dog, though, would much more appreciate a skilled physician. You'll be going to the dog the soon, so uh, there you go. He'd, he'd appreciate a skilled physician more so than a seven-year-old child. Farewell, Spedusa. Farewell. 
we should mark her and see how long it is before she actually dies. We have a granddaughter, Anya, born to Brian and uh, Maureen. So he probably met her while he was uh, captive. So they're getting on well. That's good. We get ourselves another lifestyle perk. I think we'll go for never back down. Advantage plus 5. Friendly fatal casualties minus 20%. Seems good. And our forces are going to return home. What a nice chunk of money. 68 and 68. One gold short. We have spotted another opportunity. Uh, these guys have gone to war with uh, Picked Land, which has actually lost a substantial amount of forces and is losing the war. So what we're going to see about doing is if we can siege down this area, uh, move north, siege down the lands that they've left behind as they've moved north to uh, attack Pickland, and then see if we can head across out into the sea on this side and come down and attack Aleel. Not now. You're disturbing. Look what you're doing. I'm trying to explain what I'm doing. Uh, come down here because these regions have been severely weakened. Uh, Aleel or Alul? Ulil? Aleel would be a strong Connacht name. Uh, Queen Maeve's husband in the Poinbo Hulina. Is he any good? Is he any good at anything? No, but we've we've put a hat on him. They grow up so fast. Uh, we're known for our dedication to faith. I do know about this. Um, we can't we can't do bounties plunder because we will gain twenty stress. I did. Did I forget to to do something to relax? I did. I did. Of course, I did. Where do we want to head for? Uh, we could take them all. What I want to do, like I said, is if we can take this place and then head out here. And then come down the coast. While well, nobody's watching. Nobody's expecting nothing. They're sieging a place right across the river from us. And we should be able to get out before they even notice us. Or before they have time to respond. Fantastic. Uh, we did indeed take a prisoner. And now we have uh, the coast here to take a look at. So fairly weakened forces. Unless this lad comes for us. So we'll park down here and we'll see what we can do. We're now up to 11 prisoners. We have a Brythonic Briton. Ten quid. There you go. And we're now up to a grand total of 54, which is a nice chunk. I'm a bit wary of pushing too far inland. Especially as there's, um, there's stuff going on up here. Uh, this one has already been taken. So we could come down here, and I think that's exactly what we will do. So we're now we're now on the outskirts of London. Do you know what? This region is severely weakened, and I think after this we will put out to sea and return. We have almost a hundred gold. Again, like these numbers are just absolutely amazing. Uh, but we, we are putting ourselves in a bit of danger if we continue pushing in this direction. I think for now, I think for now, we've, we've a, a handful of prisoners taken. 
we've hit 14, a grand total, a career total of 14 prisoners. Constantinus will not, will get nothing for him. But lads, look at that for martial and prowess. We will negotiate his release, we will demand his conversion and recruit him. Augustinius. We'll get 50 for him. And... 10. Uh, but he's he's thinking about uh, somebody else. Fantastic. That's actually... Do you know what? That's a good day's work. And with the... With the money that we're going to get. Uh, I think that is enough for now. You're absolutely right, Khan. You have no choice. We have been given another grandchild, our first grandson, to continue the comic the line. Loch Lawn. May you grow to be strong and wise. And hopefully your father doesn't get killed in battle sometime. Uh, his brother's prowess has been improved. That's handy. And here he is. Nile Nanoi Gulloch, Nile of the Nine Hostages, has come of age. With sufficient tutelage, even a child that has displayed little natural inclination towards warfare, such as Nile, can come to truly understand it. It is impressive to see such skill in someone so young. He displays a level of insight that's rare even among veteran commanders. Let's take a look at him. He has a flat 10, 7 prowess. He has decided <laughs> to convert. I forgot about that. We need to do something about that. Is the wife putting ideas into your head? Yes and no. So... I'm not gonna lie. I don't remember arranging this, this marriage. Was this arranged? Were you kidnapped at some stage? I have no idea when this was organized. Anyway, do you know what? Never mind. I've been too busy uh, pillaging the coast of, of Britain, the coast of everywhere. Can we get you to convert and stop being silly? No, it looks like. Because he's not... Where is he? How did you end up here? We just raided that place. Did we leave you there? Did we leave you behind? Now, the thing about... Because I thought he was in our court, but it's entirely possible that he wasn't. Uh, because here's the, the strange thing about him. Here is his mother, who is Vicaria Carina of Britannia. What? Uh, Jeffrey Keating says that um, Uka kidnapped Karina, took her as a concubine, and that Niall was her child, and that she was the daughter of a king of the Saxons. Now, with these events happening in the 400s, that doesn't make much sense. Uh, so Jeffrey Keating, uh, I think, is it Jeffrey Keating or is it somebody else? I think it's Jeffrey Keating has suggested that... Um, that she was actually the daughter of the King of Britannia, or the King of the Britons. So, she does not start off in our court, in the game. I thought Niall started off in our court, but it looks like he doesn't, so... Yeah, but I educated him. Niall, what are you at? Will you come home? He's also the primary heir. Uh, invite to court, we do have a hook. Uh, we will use the hook to invite him to court. Or he'll accept anyway. Yeah. Irish families. Don't even start. Right then, some level of normalcy returns to us. At the end of the episode, our son has come home. He has given up that silly owl Christian belief system he had and has regressed to Gaelic paganism. Uh, he's still betrothed 
to that young one. Niall has an alliance to her father. Uh, she has an alliance to Niall's mother. But she is also carrying on with her father's marshal. So that's problematic. Uh, we could just tell Niall, grow up, conquer Alloch, and take some concubines. So we might just say that to him, because that alliance uh, could be valuable to him. I'd be hoping when they get betrothed, or when they get married, that uh, that Uka might gain access to that um, to that alliance. Not too sure. The other really handy thing is that, as you can see, Niall has taken his brother Brian's place in the army. So in the next episode, it'll be Niall that'll be joining us as we set sail again for Britain to raid it into the ground. And there, Niall will learn the skills that will serve him in becoming Mwil Nanoi Gulach. And eventually, in about 20 or 30 years' time, he'll capture St. Patrick and bring him to Ireland and cause a lot of trouble for everyone. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to be kept up to date with new videos. If you're interested in hearing more about the history of this time period, if you'd like a dedicated video on the history of this time period as represented in uh, Fallen Eagle, drop a comment below in the comment section. Uh, do check out the uh, Maniacal Link Discord. Links are below in the description where uh, if you have any questions on any of the maps that I'll be linking, uh, you can give a shout over there as well. Thank you for joining me on this episode, and I'll talk to you again on the next one.